Well, I call this the National Treasure Series, and never was it more appropriate than with my guest here today. I have Manny being Manny 1.0. I love it. We got Manny. We have Courtney from Reckless Cards. This is, I mean, I guess you guys are representing a whole bunch of stuff. The Reckless Cards family, the Reckless Cards breaking crew, the Too Thick podcast. Did I leave anything out? Like, what, what else do we got there? The Alliance is sort of, you know, represented. We don't know anything about the Alliance. No, you know, <laughs> first rule about Alliance is, you know, you don't. Dangerous Games it. Pod, Sarah, I mean, Mrs. Squirts. There you go. We got Dangerous Games Pod. I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to have to check it out now. I guess it's true crime. Yes. Because that's kind of what uh, you know what everybody does now. Um, I may have to come up with a true crime, you know, hobby thing. Like someone stole the Kobe, and we're yeah. gonna have to figure out. There's like, a lot who... of true crime in the hobby, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, yeah, someone should do a podcast about it, 100%. Well, listen, I welcome you guys on. This has been a really fun series for me. If for no other reason, I get to wear different T-shirts. So that's Mm -hmm. fun that you pull wax for this one here. Um, You know, I I think I have a reckless hat if you want me to put it on, but I'm having a good hair day. Your hair looks great. We had to get a new – I want to design – I had a new hat this year for the National. I didn't get them for everybody. It was a gift from one of our followers, and it got a lot of – like, people loved it. So. People love a freebie. I mean, I love with so much free stuff. I love with so much free stuff. I had to check my bag. I flew. I flew in with just a wheelie bag and a backpack. I left. I had to check my my bag because I left with a whole other you know case full of crap. I drove freebies too. Oh, you got some freebies. You got a little little lines. For me, just as an off, I gave Manny weird packs of Michigan collegiate sports did you open those like, i have no idea what's even he, did. In he keeps getting it taken down off of instagram because yes. it was inappropriate i what? keep getting taken down because of the my music but i got an andre, andre rising oh all right andre the bad moon rising That's what yeah saying, so, you know. i was pretty pumped about him i had a whole video i I actually did that. It was really edit. well done. I actually got to see it before it was removed. And it got removed right away. It kept getting, so I kept trying I mean, What to kind of music it. are you using? We had a two live crew on there. What are you putting on? Well, well, it was WAP. No, no, no. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't anything. Oh, it's Thunderstruck. Do not put Thunderstruck on any of your uh, huh? music. Like, ACDC? I mean, yeah. why, why is that somehow bad? Well, probably just as bad as like Metallica with like licensing. Wait, I saw this video. I saw the Thunderstruck one. You were naked for half of it. That's why they took it down. Not because of the song, Manny. Come yeah. on. You're yeah, I tell him all the time he has to stop putting his his ween on Instagram. He really, I mean, listen, really wants it's to. It's good advice, and you should take it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the key. So, I mean, listen, you guys, I will jump into the flowers. I'll jump into the other stuff. But what's funny about this is one of my favorite parts of doing this series is I've spoken to a lot of people I've had on this National Treasure Series before. People have been guests. Manny, you played an instrumental part in building up the podcast that I'm currently talking right now. I mean, Reckless Family, some of the best supporters ever. If if, if you get Reckless in your corner, whatever it is you're doing in the hobby, it's going to be a success because these guys, they are as loyal as it comes. And, you know, I mean, they're the first family of the hobby. Easy, without without even a close second. So I, I have to give you guys flowers. I, you know, we'll get there in a sec. But one of the cool, fun parts about, you know, me being able to talk to people is – Watching the evolution of those folks in the hobby, going from, you know, collectors, going from, you know, um, we're going to break, we're going to buy collections, you know, to starting a podcast, to being a business. And one of the cool things that I got to, you know, got to hear about was you know, the Too Thick podcast. Not only is it, you know, a very popular hobby podcast, and if you don't listen to it, please go ahead and subscribe to them, and listen to their stuff. But you guys were, you had a gig. Right, you were actually working at the national, right? Tell me about that. How how was that? Like, did you prep for the national differently for that? Did you, you know, do you just all right, whatever. We're not just going to buy cards. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna you guys are laughing, so I can't wait. Tell me the story. Well, I don't know. Manny prepped by getting smashed before we went live. <laughs> I mean, so I don't know if that's different than usual, but it was uh it was definitely <laughs> I like I I actually recorded three podcasts on the at the VIP lounge. I did Dangerous Games with Sarah, and then we did Reckless with Com C. Andy Jones, by the way, is probably one of the nicest people that I've ever met in real life, in my life. Um, and then as I'm coming off the stage, I look at Manuel, and he is three sheets in the wind. 
It's not my fault. Whose fault is it? Was somebody, did somebody have a funnel and they were like holding you down? What happened? No, no. It was a guy that listened to our podcast and I was, and he knows that I get all nervous and he was buying me drinks <laughs> and, and, uh, they're, they're 15 bucks a drink. And, uh, he was buying me. Well, like, it's a VIP lounge. What yeah. do you <laughs> He was buying me Captain Coke. So I was like, thank you. I, I drank one. And then I would go over to that Hopsy area and I would just sit on the opposite side and I look over and he's like shaking another one. I'm like, no, no, I got to go up. And then I felt bad that he kept buying it. So I, I, and I'm a lightweight. So I had two and Courtney could tell I had two and I was a little nervous, but how yes. did she tell? Was it you running around in your was, boxer shorts yelling, go like Ohio this. State? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that? It's wobbly. It was like, it was wobbling. It was wobbling. His eyes were glassy. I'm like, oh my God. It was also, it might've been him getting up halfway through the podcast live and peeing. What? That could have been. <laughs> I have, yeah. Wait, you're recording? All right. So, oh, we got to spell this one out for me. You're up there. You're on stage. Manny's Manny's had a couple drinks, which is good. Well, let's give a shout out to the, you know, the. you have a fan there. You have a listener. Shout out to the Thickalos. You know, the Thickalos. You got, you know, our fan. And they're buying you drinks, which, by the way, there are worse things in the world than, yeah. you know, having somebody buy you a $15 Captain and Coke, right? I mean, so yeah. you're doing good. And thank you to that that fan. No one bought me a drink. I actually wasn't allowed in the VIP room. I wasn't on the list of people allowed to be in there. So <laughs> you know, it is what it is. What can you do? But you're you have a couple of drinks, and the podcast starts, and you start talking, right? And you're you're telling a story. You know, Manny's telling a story about you know how he is known the world over for tasting sour beverages and candies Ooh. and. The real star of that segment is the kids. Yeah, but, my, yeah, my kids. but but so you tell a story and what he just he just says I have to guys we need a break let's no. pause the recording for a second like let's, tell me how it goes. So I I was gonna wait it out, but the Ludex team <laughs> the owner, well the first the owner came and basically kicked me out of my chair so he could sit down and talk. Brian, to Jeremy. cheers, Brian. Yeah, Brian, because he was just because Jeremy was at home. He was uh, on a screen, floating head. So they heard Jeremy, the owner, came out and start talking to Jeremy. So I moved away. I'm standing on the outside of the stage. And then I was like, okay, I can hold it for longer. Now another Bloodix employee comes over, sits down in my chair. So I was like, I'm just going to walk and use the restroom while he's talking to uh, the Bloodix employee. And I came back and they were still talking. So I didn't, I don't think anyone, I mean, Courtney noticed because she was out there with me. But so you were on stage. Yes, yeah. on stage. So everyone in the audience, the hundred people in the VIP lounge watched him go to the bathroom. <laughs> in the I mean, here's the thing, because immediately my mind goes to the naked gun and Frank Drebin. <laughs> Did you bring the microphone with you? Like, <laughs> you were like oh. I was the only one holding a microphone and I would have taken it away from him. <laughs> you, hear this, you know, Manny with the microphone, you know, in the, in the, in the restroom. Like, you know, like, that, would be, that would be hashtag so Manny. Well, well. <laughs> The best part is I'm going and I look over. There's and a Brock, better part. This is, Brock, I mean, this Brock, is good enough. Brock, Brock's standing right next to me and he was on stage with me. So supposedly Brock got up with me and followed me. To Everybody laughs. I'm like, these these men are so unprofessional. <laughs> I mean, clearly he left you up there. Poor Jeremy. It's better enough that he's like the floating it's his podcast. Head. Yeah. This I, is, just, I like a fill in occasionally. No. You know, this wasn't like, uh, like a, a Dangerous Minds podcast where you were playing the role of the killer or something like no. that. This was actually the Too Thick pod. Yeah. Yep. You were about to do the segment of like, you know, uh, belly sweats or whatever, you know, whatever segment. And you said, you know sweat. what, I, I can't do the tummy sweats because I got to leave because I got I to gotta pee. I'm just yeah, thankful yeah. I don't have one of those horrible nicknames. Like, I don't want to be a meat sticks or a tummy sweat, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, if you like, before the episode's over, we could come up with a nickname. Manny, if you had to come up with a nickname for Courtney on the show, what would it be? Yes, man. Well, let's hear what no, it no, is. No, no, Courtney scares me. I'm not going to have a nickname. Mm-mm. I have to deal with those problems. I have to tell you, the podcast recording for um, doing that was – it was so cool. It was such a cool experience, and – it was a little crazy because the day before I had done dangerous games with Sarah and we do a true crime podcast and going into it, I had no idea. I didn't realize it was going to be on a stage. They're just like, you can record from the VIP launch. I'm thinking it's going to be quieter in there. We're going to have like a little corner what? where it's going to be like, I didn't realize it was on a stage with microphones and an audience that like, it was so much more than what so I did. Did they set up like a little studio there? Like with studio. their microphone, oh, yeah. they had a camera, like they stage. had a little they had four yeah. cameras. 
in front of you. It was like a press. I felt like I was at it like a- they had like the backdrop with Ludex and PWCC <laughs> on there. It was it was legit. So I walk in and I see this and I'm like, oh my God, because we do a true crime podcast. Yep. So that's not family friendly. No. No, and we were supposed to. So we had recorded a podcast at the Women in the Hobby booth, um, Tanya Harding. And it was pandemonium there. That booth was so busy the entire time that I, I never walked by there without a line of people, people coming to talk and ask questions about women's cards, people because we had signer, they had signers there. It was one of the busiest booths that I was at the whole time, aside from like maybe maybe David Marino's. His booth was constantly busy too. Um, but while we were there, it was just, we recorded it. It was like loud and I, like, it wasn't util- usable footage. So we had done Tanya Harding and I walk into the VIP area and I see what we're doing. And Sarah had prepared to do Lawrence Taylor. And we all know what Lawrence Taylor's crimes were allegedly. So I, I'm like, we can't get up on stage in front of children and go over what he has you know, done. So I'm freaking out because we have nothing else prepared and we're supposed to go on in 20 minutes. I'm like, well, we're redoing Tanya. So we redid Tanya Harding on the stage and it was fine because like even the more like difficult parts of that, you can kind of gloss over a little easier than like Lawrence Taylor. And it was it was awesome. But how did the meat sticks and tummy sweats and all the others, how did that go over in front of a crowd? It was it was good. I mean, we kept it sort of like PG-13. Yeah. So like I think that's the the. I got lucky because that's the shtick that our podcast is. We're just there to have fun. It's a hobby. Like we're the hobby and we want to talk like we're at a bar setting or like how we talk cage if we're in person. Um, so it, basically we're our experience and we joke around. I people The people know that I'm tummy sweats. Our, we do a thickest of the week and that's our PC. Um, so me getting off stage, I feel like it's just the norm. Yeah, like, it was on brand. Okay, there's Manny doing Manny things. Um, <laughs> yes. I actually, I actually, when I did it, I thought about Manny Ramirez going into the, um, you know, the Finn Green Monster and just yep. going in mid, like mid inning to the bathroom. I was like, yeah, this is just, I'm just being Manny. I mean, it's part of. I mean, listen, if, if I were you, when I tell the story again, just that was part of the, it's part of the shtick. Manny exactly. being Manny, you got to leave in the middle of it to go to the bathroom and just, you know, you're done, it's finished. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's got to be fun, guys. Right. I mean, you know, to come from, you know, you decide to start a podcast, you decide to kind of just talk and, you know, you develop a friendship and you're you're recording and you don't know who's going to listen. You don't know, you know, how many people are out there. You just kind of talk and do it. Um, A lot of people start a podcast. Ninety percent of them don't make it to like episode 10 and an even smaller percentage winds up on a stage in front of 100 people, you know, in a VIP lounge doing a live show. So kudos to you gotta be gotta be a cool thing at the national right it is it's uh for you for like for my gr- like come up I, like you said i was uh, working for you um i did the auction show for like like you said i did it for five episodes and i realized i can't talk to myself i don't i'm not good at talking to myself so shout out to you for doing the, the podcast right now how you're doing it because it is tough it's tough to just talk for 30 minutes with no feedback um but yeah i when I got with Jeremy, we kind of just clicked and we both wanted the same thing. We want to joke around and more so an entertainment type of podcast. And I think that's why we are continuing to do it because it's something that we like to do. We're not an educational like podcast. So if nobody should ever really listen to them. What's funny about it. It's funny you say that because no one should ever listen to them. What's funny about it is why it works is because I think they would still do it if people listen to you and didn't listen to them, like if oh, yeah. nobody listens to them, they would still be there having fun. It's like listening to two friends mm-hmm. talk about sports or talk about what's going on. Talk about just like at a bar, like, you know, like a sports bar. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about whatever it may be. And that is why people do listen. Yeah. Right. It's, it, you know, it's not trying to be anything. It's not right. Mm-hmm. You know what you're getting, you know what you're getting out of these guys and it works and there's real good chemistry there. Thank you. I, oh, yeah. It's, it's my therapy session. So it's my hour therapy. I mean, shout session. out to you too, because Jeremy and Manny wouldn't have met if it wasn't for you guys. So no, what happened is Paige got tired of me calling him every day for an hour, and was like, he's "Here's like, Jeremy. Jeremy's phone number." Yeah, here's <laughs> yeah, here, here you go. You go talk to this guy. <laughs> this guy's really nice. He'll listen to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, that'll be, no, I mean, listen. I'm glad it worked out. By the way, that is part of the hobby, right? I mean, that's. 
you know, we talk about it all the time, you know, I mean, the cards are, are amazing. The people are even more amazing, right? You know, and there's a, a combination of the two. You, you get that at the national um, probably more than anywhere else. It's people who you never met before. You get to hang out with them in person. They're your Instagram friends. They're your Instagram followers. Um, you know, people have cards they want to show you. People have card deals they want to make sure, you know, but I mean, you guys know this probably better than anybody. You know, it's, it's you know, you're, you're building relationships with folks. And, uh, you know, I enjoy that the most. So my question, I, this might be the latest I've gotten into an episode without asking my flowers question. We're full 15 minutes in. Uh, I love you guys. Obviously, you always have stuff to talk about. It's an easy conversation with you, too. Um, if you had to give, you know, flowers to somebody, give a compliment to somebody for what they were doing, you know, the right way, it could be anything, man. It could be the bathroom attendant who helped you get in and out quickly <laughs> so that you can get back to doing the show. It literally could be any a collector, you know, who had cool, cool cards that, you know, you thought were, were making deals. Right. It could be anybody, anybody who at the national was doing things the right way you want to give compliments to Courtney. Let's um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the floor first and then Manny, you can answer after. Okay. I saw that you let, um, Bro Namath do three, and I have three, and I'll do them really super fast. Sure, you do three. Well, do eight. The first, I don't care. <laughs> the first <laughs> do one is Ledix. Do a dozen. <laughs> the first one is Ledix, um, because obviously the VIP lounge was amazing. It was the best VIP lounge that I've seen at the National ever. They really wanted to go above and beyond and make it like a, a real like landing place for people, and it was. They did amazing with uh, – like they had – Brian Urlacher in there, all the events that they had scheduled, platinum protectors giving stuff away. It was cool. It was a really nice, and the air conditioning worked, which was amazing. <laughs> um, number two is the women in the hobby booth, and specifically Sarah Layton, um, Ty from Bullpound LA, Julie and Anne Marie from Women on Tops, and Cindy from uh, Kentucky Road Show. You, they, I, I cannot. Kathy, sorry. Uh, There's just I I could like list all the women. Kayla, Mama Breaks, everybody that was in there. Um, it that booth was amazing, well done, incredibly well run. It was, uh, it was a wonderful place. If you were like a woman to go, if you were a man, anyone could go there. But like really having a place where, as a woman in a in a place that's a lot of men, where you can go and just be like, oof, a place to sit and relax and chill, and they'll they'll all be there with open arms. So that was awesome. And last, I, this was the one cage before we got on, you said this, and I was going to say this too, is Jeremy for like, I wouldn't have been there oh. if it wasn't for him. <laughs> he was he, for like doing oh, the, the podcast, like a floating head, having no, like he couldn't see or, or like even understand what was happening around him. Like how stressful that must've been. <laughs> um, like, I know he couldn't hear, like really hear us that well and he could not see how people were reacting to what he was saying. <laughs> so that Manny really there to hold it down for him, at least while he was on the stage. While he was on stage. <laughs> um and yeah, I mean he just if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been there. And I like for him to like sacrifice that so I could go was pretty amazing. Like he's a he's a wonderful husband and I'm lucky. I've spent time with him and you guys at the national and it's I mean, it is like the mecca for card people. People love cards, you know, make a, a business out of this or it's their hobby. You know, it, it, it it's the Super Bowl for us. So to miss that, that had to suck, um, you know, for him. So we'll have to, whatever the next big show is, we'll make sure the, the alliance that sh doesn't really exist throws a big, like, you know, Jeremy style bash to make sure he's, we make up for him not being at the, at the, at the national, but uh yeah, I mean, listen, Annie, before you get a chance to get flowers, I'm going to give you flowers because, you know, part of being on a team is just showing up. Sometimes people don't even show up. You were there, man. I mean, for part of it, for part of it, you were there on stage. I mean, you had to go, you know, nature call sometimes, but at least you were there, which is yep, good. Exactly. You know, the floating head knew he could count on you being there, which is important. You know, Thank it's you. just part of, part of being part of something is, you know, actually showing up. So yeah. who are you giving flowers to? So I got a couple too. I was going to say Ludex, but specifically Matt from Ludex. Um, he basically got me into the Beckett party. He's like, he's like court. He that wasn't me. basically, that was 100%. Yeah, he, 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 he's like, after our live podcast, he takes me into their VIP. Cause there's a, there's a VIP section and then there's their VIP section. And I mean, he's like, Manny, you're coming to the Beckett party with me. I was like, okay. He's like, you think Courtney and Sarah want to go with us? Mrs. Squirts. I was like, yes. 
And he's like, all right, we're getting them all in. So he got us all in there. So I, I do appreciate him a lot. I was going to say Dave Marino. I know, uh, I know, I think Brandon said uh, Marino as well. He gave a lot of people a, have. He gave me a shot to break for kids, like yep. giveaway packs. He told me, he's like, man, you want a break for me? I was like, never been a breaker. I don't know why you're trusting me. But when we went there, it was pretty much just giving packs away yep. uh, to kids and to see those kids' faces when I was like, you want a free pack? And they come running over. It, it was it was great. So thank you for that opportunity. And uh, you, Cage. You gave me flowers. I want to give you flowers just because without you, without you and the Luca Tigers team, Lucas Tigers bronze team, I wouldn't be here. You gave me a shot. I never did content before, but you guys gave me a shot to do content. You're like, sure. Why not? We need the help. <laughs> so, <laughs> Why not? And without, I mean, we went. What's the worst thing you can do? Like stop midway through and go to the bathroom? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you could do nothing. You took me to the I met I met <laughs> reckless cards through you guys. I went to mint with you one and I was your contact guy, met a ton of people. So without yes, and you were a good enough sport to wear a ridiculous tiger print shirt. Yeah, so got that shirt. you're a better person than I am because I would yeah. never <laughs> well, hey Cage Cage Cage's teammate wasn't there, so I had to step in and be that guy for him. So I was wearing the tiger out. And he's always the one that shows up. <laughs> yeah, he shows up, man. Listen, that is I mean Nothing else can be done, right? If you, you know, you got to show up. That's the first step, right? I mean, yeah. they tell you the, uh, you know, a journey of, uh, of a thousand miles starts with one step, right? You got to take that. You got to be there to take that step, you know? Yep. So mm-hmm. Availability is the best ability. Yep. I like so, it. I like yeah. it. I'm going to work that into my, my new true crime podcast that I'm going to do to compete. I can't with wait. This. I want to be a guest on that. I'm very <laughs> good at true crime. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Manny, I appreciate that, man. But look, give the flowers back to yourself. It is it is hard to show up. It is hard to continue to do this. There are days where you're sick. There are days where you you know you just don't feel like doing it. There are days where you took a loss on a card and you've taken some losses, just as I have. And you don't want to show up and talk about those. And you know it, it takes a certain kind of person to share that stuff with yep. the world. Um, you know you share your family with the world. You've now built another family with the podcast, folks. You're doing great, man. And and okay. listen, if anybody out there doesn't follow these guys, please follow. Follow Reckless Cards. Follow Too Thick Pod different kind of content, fun stuff, really, you know, check your brain at the door because you definitely don't need a brain for what they're putting out there. Check your brain at the door and, you know, check the, <laughs> check the craziness at the door too. You just, it, it's, it's, you're just going to have fun listening to these guys. Um, and you guys, you know, you both do the hobby the right way. So the national itself, um, you know, you've been to there, you've been a couple of years, um, at, at least a few, obviously this was different for you because you had some business obligations while you were there. I mean, you guys did a break, you did a live podcast. How did this one compare for you guys um, to the ones in the past? And, you know, if I were to put sort of like the, the CEO of the national hat on your heads, like what's something you might bring? Either something that, you, that was done well this year, what was something you bring to Cleveland for the next national to kind of improve it, make sure they have it? You, you feel free to say it, working air conditioning. That, that's perfectly fine. I got, I, I, got, I got two of them for two. the following year. And I, I brought this up on ours. And uh, so the first one is the corporate area. I feel like there should be a better schedule layout of everything that's happening in the corporate booths. Because, like, for example, Fanatics Live, all of a sudden, uh, Allen Iverson is breaking at the Fanatics booth. No one knew about it unless it was word to mouth. Like you're hearing from someone else that Allen Iverson there was there. Um, Second. So that would be my number one. And just having like a layout of each corporate booth and what website could do a better job of that. Yeah. Panini had Barry Sanders in their booth and no one knew we yep. heard from we're walking and they're like Barry Sanders at Panini. So we all went down there, but so like that. And then um, second, I was saying it was really hard because the way it was laid out to find booths. And I know Courtney had this problem, mm-hmm. but I think there should be for the dealers, a checkbox of like, what's your majority type of card? Are you a vintage guy? Are you football, basketball, baseball tcg or non-sport and then they put them in the section so then if i'm a tcg guy i know we're okay all my TCG right. people are that's, here by the way man that's a good idea i've heard a lot of people say all right we're gonna put the tcg guys here we're gonna put these guys here but nobody has figured out like an easy way of of because look the more modern dealers they have a lot of everything but you you know to make them kind of put number one what are you a majority of like what yes. are 
if you have to come up with I'm 50% modern football, I'm 50% 90s basketball, whatever it is, and then segment it that way, I think that's a very good suggestion. I yeah, because like imagine in basketball for you, 80s, 80s and 90s collectors, There's that's – there's own like cliche of collectors. Yep. You can have a row that's just mostly basketball, a row that's football. Yeah, there's a million different ways of doing it. hundred percent. Oh yeah. We had, so I, I, had I had the pleasure of walking around with Lauren from IMG and she, that's what she does. She's an event planner. So I'm listening to her go uh, like, uh, like talk about what she would do and listening to her. It was, it was pretty eye opening. Like, her, like somebody who does this and like large scale events like that she's so smart she should get some flowers too she's absolutely brilliant and she made me buy a bunch of stuff wicked collects by the way because everybody wants to follow her i haven't uh she made me buy a bunch of stuff i probably wouldn't have bought (laughs) so (laughs) but yeah i agree um that is definitely something that needs to be done better it is hard to find stuff um some people like this one guy like i know people pay a ton of money to be at the national and this one guy was like off in a corner he had no table skirts. They didn't get any chairs. And I, like they, it's like they might as well have not existed because they were just like all by themselves. And uh, that that's definitely something that needs to be like worked on is the layout. I would have and, and I would even take it a step further and I'd be like all the card companies are in this part of the car corporate. I know that like Tops and Panini probably don't want to be by each other. But if you want to go see card stuff, it's going to be here. If you want grading stuff, this is the grading area. And right. you can make your booth as awesome as you want. But you're going to be in the grading area where like people can go and get their cards graded and pick the grading company they want. And I would organize it like that. And then I would do all the corporate stuff right in the center. And I do a wheel around the outside of like vintage, TCG, basketball, football, you know, comics, and then miscellaneous, not anything. Cause I saw tennis shoes and comic books. Yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch memorabilia, of memorabilia. You know, you kinda, I guess you gotta kind of got to check a box and say, this is what I am majority. I like that. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good idea. So, I think it would make it easier to find what you're looking for. Which one of you guys ate fudge at the National? Did anybody stop over at the fudge table and buy fudge? I was too scared. No. <gasps> you bought fudge? Of course I did. All yeah. right. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I saw that over by it was the mascot booth and you know a couple of the auction houses. I was like, this is this is interesting. Fudge. So did you did try you the uh, did you try the, the, the card show sushi? Or you're not I that right? No, I, it was too warm for sushi. Manny, you had the card show you did? Yeah, it was a bad idea. Oh, no wonder. No wonder. Guys, here's the thing. it was you, fun. Like, it was fun. I mean, I'm glad you had a blast. Cleveland's going to be interesting because the hotels are nowhere near and the floor plan is going to be different. It's going to be interesting stuff, but I know you guys will be there. And because of that, we all know we'll have a good time. You guys clearly are national treasures. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for having us.